this one be a leaper. Assalam alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hay ala salah, hay ala salah. Hay ala salah, hay ala salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That is, praise be to Allah, the guardian, the guardian, the cherisher, keeper, sustainer of all the worlds, of all the systems of knowledge. We render all praises to Him, and we seek His help, and we ask for His forgiveness. We put our faith and trust in Him. Mighty and sublime is He. I bear witness and give open testimony that there's nothing in the creation worthy of worship except the law and the law alone, the one and only. There is none like unto him. <coughs> and I bear witness, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the Lord's servant, messenger prophet, and guide to all of humanity for all time. We ask Allah's peace, his blessings, his highest exaltation to be upon the Prophet Muhammad, upon his family, his companions, the righteous all, us, the Muslims, in peace. Dear Muslims, dear believers, I reach you in the best way that I could possibly give my brothers and my sisters. As-salamu alaykum. I'm about the followers of this excellent salutation to our Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace Dear Muslims, dear believers, I advise you, as I advise myself, to fear Allah, to have taqwa for Allah, to reverence Him, have regard for Him and His creation, and know that He is the Creator of all, He creates what was never created. We should fear God as He should be feared. If you and I learn nothing else about Quranic scriptural language, we learn this, that it comes in stages. It's never, or it is not, it was not revealed to our prophet humble the prayers and the peace we do do all at once. If you examine the book in its in just a general term, it talks about creation of Adam. But for those of you who study, you know Adam's creation came in stages. It wasn't all of it. universe in its wide expanse. As man reaches out, he finds more and more that it's bigger than what he ever thought it was. He's learning that in stages. I often make reference, as the law does in the Quran, to the plants. Those that live, those that die, but whenever they grow, they grow in stages. 
The same can be said about the pillars of our religion. It builds stage upon stage. You can say the same thing about our articles of faith. Same thing, stage upon stage. Even the Mujahid, the man, the man W. D. Muhammad, advises us to follow logic to its logical conclusion. Well, anything that you follow, in order to get to the conclusion, you've got to pursue it in stages. If you create a problem and all of a sudden you find the answer, then you haven't followed the logic. And let's assume that you turn the Quran and you find the answer in Quran that you were looking for. The Quran built that answer up in stages. If you further examine it, these things that proceed in stages, really examine them closely, you'll come to the conclusion, as I do, that they all go in cycles. So it's not just a stage that it grows, or the, it's not just a stage that it goes, or even if I make reference to a plant that it grows, but it reaches a plateau where it's no longer in existence, it dies and then Allah brings it back to life again. That's a cycle. If you want to get technical about it, it's what they, they say, it's cyclical. It means it just goes around and around. Well, you remember in, what was it, your botany class or one of the science classes when they talked about the, the, the rain. It was the sun that would dry up the water on the face of the earth that would then go back up into the clouds and do what? come back down. It's a cycle. People die. Others are born. That's a cycle. And when you and then once you're born, you grow in stages. And then what happens? You die. And then life be, life begins, maybe not for you here, but it begins on earth for others. Then you start in another life. And hopefully you'll spark that life in the general. Even when you look at the pillars of our religion, they're sickening. Your declaration that there's no God but Allah, and that Muhammad was his is his messenger, you repeat that often. You repeat it often where you may not say the word, you repeat it often in your actions. Because it keeps coming around. Something happens, what do you say? It's the will of Allah. That's recognizing that God is one. When you stick closely with this religion, everything that you do, everything that you say is based on this book is based on the on, on, on the hadith, the sayings of our Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him, and his sirah, his history, those things that we know that he did. Why do we know he did it? Because it was reported that he did, on good authority. <coughs> you look at our salah, it's cyclical. Five times a day, every day. You don't miss a day. Cold outside, you still make salat. Hot outside, you still make salat. Raining, salat. Don't matter. You do it Monday through Sunday. If there was another day in the week, you'd be doing it then too. But you keep doing it over and over and over again. It's a cat. Same thing. You don't pay the cat just once and then you hey, I'm done. No. You continually do it. And when you run out of zakat, then what do you get? Sadaka. It just keeps coming. It ain't always got to be money. 
we have a tendency to want to look at it that way. And yes, it's what we need in order to move this religion forward. Because we want to make a showing. Kindness is a good thing. But kindness with some money in your pocket is better. Because then, then you're able to spread your kindness everywhere. Can't do that if you ain't got no money. But the zakat is cyclical. And I think it's appropriate that I mention we're close to the month of Ramadan for Siam, which is cyclical. It comes every year. You don't miss a beat. At least you shouldn't. For your own good. Not 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 for anyone else's sake, but but that of, of God Himself. Because He said fasting is for him, it ain't for me. You couldn't please me if you tried. And you shouldn't be trying to. I'm your brother in Islam. That's my role. That's that's the role that I play. Whether I'm here, behind this lectern, or on that floor, I'm your brother in this long. Whatever you do, you pleasing God. And if I see you pleasing God, I'm going to be pleased as well. Because now, we're in a race. Race for what? To all that's good. Nothing's wrong with that. But it keeps going around in a cycle. Don't you want your Ramadan this year to be better than the one you had last year, the one you had previously? Of course you do. And then your final pillar is that of Hajj. Now, Allah cut you a break on that one. He ordered you to do it once in your lifetime, then gave you two caveats. One is if you can afford it. Can't afford it. I'm sure not. But you should never stop trying. You should always be growing constantly toward that. Now you may think, well, there's nothing cyclical about Hodge because the law tells you to do it only one time in your, your life. Well, go to Hodge. <laughs> Go to Hajj and see how many times you circumambulate the Kaaba. That ain't nothing but a cycle. You in a square going around a, 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 in a circle. Seven times, counterclockwise for those who don't know. And Imam Muhammad gave some taps here on that that is still powerful to this day even explain to you grown men while you walk around in a diaper. All right? You bad man. Bad man. You'll see you walking around with your, 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 your right shoulder out and you walking around in a diaper. Nothing underneath of you but a seamless towel or a seamless sheet. And there's a reason why it's seamless. But that's, that's another, that's another. But what this is all leading up to is my topic for the day, which is the cycle for forgiveness. Because as I told you earlier, everything has a cycle, and so does forgiveness. You don't just stumble upon it. First, there's got to be a reason for you to forgive. So you have to take some sort of action. And then whatever that action it is that you take, that action needs to invoke a reaction. Because if someone did something to you, and you don't even think they did it, then you don't even react to it. You know people like that. I know I do. Sometimes it, 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 in, in days gone by, it would make me hot. I would be, what, what they say, mad as a wet hen? 
just hollering, screaming, cursing, acting like a fool. And the person who I was addressing, it's okay. They were just as calm. They were just as cool. Now I'm, I'm ranting and raving. No, it's all right. I understand. I, I won't do it. What do you mean you won't do it? Now here, now, in that cycle, now I've got two things to address. Not acting like an idiot, and then if I'm any kind of man at all, recognizing my own wrong, I've got to ask the law for forgiveness. I know that now. I didn't know it back then, but I certainly know it now. And whenever you find yourself in a position like that, you need to go and ask the law for forgiveness. But that forgiveness is going to come inside you. Because it's a hard thing to do. Especially when you're in the wrong. Especially when you're in the wrong. One of the greatest stories that we have in our holy book is the story of Yusuf. There's several instances, and, and I'm not going to go through the whole story because you know, the Lord created a whole new sort with, with, uh, with uh, several ayats. So I'm not going to go through that, but I want, I do want to, <coughs> I do want to remind some of us of those ayats where these <clears throat> cycles of forgiveness found themselves. First, the interesting thing is, you can see those cycles in the story as you look at it in the whole. Because it starts out with Yusuf going to his father, saying, oh father, I had a dream. And in my dream, I saw 12 stars, and those stars prostrated themselves to me. And if you know the story, that's how it ends. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff in between. But it starts out with the dream, and it ends with his brothers, his family, prostrating themselves to him. Read the story. It's, it's um, uh, Sword twelve. And, 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 and the whole story is on Yusuf, so it doesn't start at 12 and then continue to 13. You, you, you read 12 and you get the whole story. But within that story, Yusuf had an encounter with the king's wife. And if you recall, it was a wise man who stepped in to help the king determine who was telling the truth and who was lying. And the wise man said if his shirt is torn from the front, then he is the liar and she's telling the truth. But if it's torn from the rear, which it was, then she's the liar and he's telling the truth. And then the king said, oh Yusef, pass this over, oh wife, Ask for forgiveness. Now, if you read the whole story, you'll even see how the wife got to the point where she even tried to seduce Yusuf out of his natural self. That's in the story. So when I'm telling you these things, I don't want to have to keep filling in the holes for you. I will tell you just to read the story and you will see where the cycles are, where it, where it begins and where it ends. The brothers, they conspired on more than one occasion, on at least one occasion, to get rid of Yusuf. In fact, did, threw him down a well.
And they said, Oh, our Father, ask for us forgiveness for our sins, for we were truly at fault. And here's, what the, here's the Father's reply. He said, Soon will I ask my Lord for forgiveness for you, for he is a being of forgiveness. Law also says in the Quran, Is there a doubt about a law, creator of the heavens and the earth? It is he who invites you in order that he may forgive you your sin and give you respite for eternal good. They said, Ah, oh, you are no more than human like ourselves. You wish to turn us away from the gods our fathers used to worship. Then bring us some clear authority. This was a conversation that took place between Ibrahim and the pagans. And he asked the question, is there a doubt about him? The creator of the heavens and the earth. It is he who invites you in order that he may forgive you your sins and give you respite for a term of point. The Prophet Muhammad, in, in his hadith, advised us that if there was no sin on the earth, and Allah would wipe out all of the creatures on the face of the earth and create a whole new world that would sin just so that he could forgive Man, that's powerful. That is powerful. So all these folk running around here wanting to be sinless and blameless and so, you know, Highest, you know, they, they, it, it's almost like they, 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 they take a bath every 15 minutes just to remain pure and, and, and clean and, and, and holier than you and I. You're creating a difficulty for yourself. You're putting all of mankind in jeopardy trying to be sinless. Now, this is not a suggestion, this is not a suggestion to the feeble mind that you need to go out and start raping and robbing and killing and stealing and, and, and just cutting the food. No. Because remember, the first priority is that you be balanced. So you want to go cut up? Go and cut up. But do something right. Allah tells that to the man and to the woman. Before the man goes and 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 and, and loves and, and cares for his wife. Any sexual act that you perform with your wife, Allah tells you to do what? Do a good deed beforehand. That's to keep you balanced so that you won't just think that she's another piece of furniture for you to use or vice versa. Because I've been around long enough to see it flip. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, 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 there have been some sisters who've been charged with assault and battery. Okay? Trust me when I tell you, there's some domestic violence that takes place against me. Not in the same regard that it that or not in the same at the same level that it does for women, but it certainly happens. But that's, that's how God, that's how he treats his servants. He wants to forgive you. In fact, there is another happy, I don't want to get, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let, let, let me not do that. Yeah, I'm there. 
the old chorus that Miss Prince was given. Once again, brothers and sisters, I greet you the greeting of Salaam Alaikum. It is part of the mercy of Allah. For you severe or harsh part, they would have broken away without you. So pass over their thoughts and ask for Allah's forgiveness. And consult them in affairs of men. Then when you have taken a decision, put your trust in Allah. For Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. Be quick in the race for forgiveness from your Lord and for a garden whose will is that of the whole of the heavens and of the earth prepared for the righteous. Those who spin freely, whether in prosperity or in adversity, who restrain anger and pardon all men, for Allah loves those who do good. And those who having done something to be ashamed of or wrong their own souls, earnestly bring Allah to mind and ask for his forgiveness for their sins. And who can forgive sins except the law? And are never obstinate in persisting knowingly in the wrong they have done. For such the reward is forgiveness from their Lord, and gardens and rivers flowing underneath, and eternal dwelling. How excellent a recompense for those who work and strive. I have dealt with this issue the way that I have because I as an individual as well as this community will be we are in the beginning stages of seeking forgiveness This is, as part of the, the protocol for Juma. Most of you are aware that the first part is reserved for the glorification of the law. And I think we have accomplished that. The second part, is for us to deal with affairs of the community. And in, in an effort to respect your time and to respect mine, I don't want to hold you any longer than what we have required of ourselves. We start at 1.30. We end at 2 30. For those of you who wish to hold back and make some of the prayers, fellowship with those that have the time, we respect it. But 2 30, we want you to. Last week, 
after the Juno, I think I took a little bit more time uh, explaining the incident that occurred to this community regarding the oversight of the Muslim journal, particularly of our resident and mayor, Sultan Abu, who traveled to Philadelphia with his wife to receive an award. But as, if you look in the paper, it is as if he was never even. And so over the last week, I took some time to send a letter to the journal, and I'm going to share that letter with you now so that I don't have to hold you back. We, we, we're no longer in the nation. We don't, we don't have any hold back meetings anymore. <laughs> and, 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 and so that any of you don't misunderstand, I wasn't there, but, but it must have been so rough because I heard about it. And, and there, there's, certainly, there's certainly those here that can testify to it. But this was the letter that I wrote to the editor of the Muslim Journal, Sister Aisha Mustafa. Allah says in Quran, whenever you, whatever you are given here is but a convenience of this life. But that which is with Allah is better and more lasting. It is for those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. Those who avoid greater crimes and shameful deeds, and when they are angry, even then forgive. Those who listen to their Lord and establish regular prayer, who conduct their affairs by mutual consultation, who spend out of what we bestow on them for sustenance, and those who in an oppressive wrong is inflicted on them are not cowed to help and defend themselves. The recompense for an injury is an injury equal thereto in degree. But if a person forgives and makes reconciliation, his reward is due from Allah. For Allah does not love those who do wrong. But indeed, if any do help and defend themselves, after a wrong done to them against such, there is no cause of blame. The blame is only against those who oppress men with wrong them and instantly, trans instantly transgress beyond bounds through the land, defying right and justice, for which there will be a grievous penalty. But indeed, if any show patience and forgive, that will truly be an exercise of courageous will and resolution in the conduct of affairs. On the authority of Abu Sayyid El Qudra, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I heard the messenger of Allah, the prayers and the peace be on him, say, Whosoever of you sees an evil action, let him change it with his hands. And if he is not able to do so, then with his tongue. And if he is not able to do so, then with his heart. And that is the weakest of faith. In a May 19, in a May 18, 1984 edition of the then American Muslim Journal, my leader and teacher of Mujeddin, Imam W.D. Muhammad said the following. If an individual has a difference with the local leader or with the national leader, the Islamic democracy protects his right to bring that grievance or those differences to the attention of <clears throat> to the attention of the public gathering. Then the person who has a sincere grievance or problem or issue to raise, and they shouldn't be treated as troublemakers. They should be heard and listened to. If they are proven to be troublemakers, after they have expressed themselves, 
that they should be called troublemakers. But don't call a person a troublemaker before they have had an opportunity to speak. The opportunity to speak is supposed to be preserved in an Islamic society until they have that opportunity to express themselves. In the interest of time, there were two other quotes that I gave from uh, the man. I would then, I then went on to give Sister Aisha the greetings of Assalamu alaikum, Sister Aisha Mustafa. My name is Haladine Abdul Gupta, associate in demand at the New African Islamic Community Center in Washington, D.C. I write this letter in protest of the Muslim Journal's lack of coverage of our resident in Mecca, Sultan Muhammad Abdul, one of five prominent awardees who traveled along with his wife to the 11th Annual National Muslim Business Council Award Bank, hosted by the University of the Muslim Business Association, Saturday, May 3rd, in Philadelphia. And I reference the Muslim Journal, May 30th, 2014. In the immediate instant of my concern, what is becoming more and more disconcerting is our inability to depend on your paper to report these and other events to those of us who wanted to be there anywhere our community is growing but could I remind us it was God's messenger, our prophet, may the prayers and the peace be on him, who was quoted as saying, those who were present tell those who weren't here, perhaps they will benefit more from this than you. Even though he and his wife traveled to Philadelphia for the entire weekend's events, appearing in the awards banquet program introduced by NMBC President David Hassan, received a magnificent glass teardrop award that showed some thought went into the program's honorees and concluded with a speech to the attendees. If I had to depend on the Muslim Journal to report any of that, it, it is as though he wasn't even there, didn't appear on the program, wasn't introduced by the NMBC president, got no award, and gave no speech. That's an insult to not just him and his wife, and if they don't feel insulted, I do. But the NAICCDC community, the NBBC and post UMBA, and all of our affiliations with Moss Cares. <coughs> And, and all of our affiliations with Moss Cares. In some circles, it's called shoddy reporting. In others, a slanted story. The more sophisticated term being used in multiple variations is political theater or political drama. This protest has led us to conclude a boycott of your people, an annual financial loss to you and savings to us $1,612 is the most appropriate action in gaining your attention and that of others in order to initiate changes in the reporting practices, especially of events that affect our community. I do not make this decision lightly. I have gone out of my way in making sure I follow the correct Islamic program. Sure, I went to my exam first with my concern addressing issues of leadership on the part of your paper and the role it plays in our community, human decency, and making sure no one will be unduly affected by my decision and the writing of what I perceive to be an egregious wrong. With my imam's permission, I informed Master Muhammad of my decision to boycott the journal in a June 5th letter, which is enclosed, so as not to cause that community any undue financial hardship, 1,040 papers and By knowing we had in them order papers, I knew we were no longer going to be captured. That same Friday, I addressed our community in a public statement immediately after Salat and Jumat, reading them the letter to Master Muhammad and advising them that we would no longer be carrying the paper, explaining why and that my decision did not them from taking out a personal 
a subscription to the journal should they choose to do so. We at the NAICCDC are a young community, nine years old this month. From the outset, we established ourselves without objection on being affiliated with the community of our leader, the teacher, Imam W.B. There was no other consideration. The publication of your paper and our conscious effort to always have it available as a dawa tool for our Southeast Washington, D.C. community was tantamount to who we are as individual Muslims and what we represent as a community. In our minds, it says to whoever comes in, Muslim or non-Muslim, this is an Islamic community associated with, affiliated with the community of Imam Jeremy the Mujahid, son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, founder of the Supreme Leader of the Nation of Islam. We are proud of that. We never, ever, ever purchased the journal to sell, always giving them away instead to both the Islamic community and the community served by our resident imam at his retail business. business. Customers come in, buy, buy something or not, they can always walk out with the journal. Even some years ago, when Masjid Muhammad had an overabundance of old journal publications, we were one of the communities they turned to to take the overlooks, and we used those for our continuing dialogue efforts. So the support for your paper has always been there. From our inception, I, without fail, week in and week out, every Friday for the past nine years, picked up 20 copies of the Muslim Journal for Masjid Muhammad. Even, even in the beginning, when the community didn't have the monthly $124 to $155 upfront payment to Masjid Muhammad, I would put it on my personal credit card to be reimbursed later. I did that just to make sure we stayed current. And for six of those nine years, I also subscribed to the Muslim Journal at either my home or business as additional support. As the community grew and contributions increased, our small but accomplished community was able to stand up on its own, taking care of all of our obligations without having to constantly burden the belief. But we've always, without fail, supported the Muslim Journal without having to be asked. I now learn that support has not been reciprocated. It is my understanding without going into detail, because I didn't ask. This oversight, this snub, is not the first time my email and what follows in our community has been dismissed, some say disrespected, for the but for the foreseeable future, it will be the last. We won't be giving you a chance to do that to us again. We wish you or we wish you or your staff no ill will. We are taking what we believe to be a common sense approach to a common problem. When one party has been grieved by another, we pray to Allah that this message reaches your heart as a collective in the spirit in which it was intended. And we pray Allah have mercy on you and your staff. Forgive us for our sin guide us towards what is right and just. And I mean, I now begin in accordance with Quran and Sunnah, the cycle of forgiveness. Where there's an action, or lack of an action on your part, causing a response and reaction on mine, thus beginning the cycle of seeking forgiveness from Allah. As-salamu alaykum, your brother and service of Allah. <clears throat> Narrated Abu Herrera. The Lord's Apostle said, Every night, it is the last third of the night, our Lord secure the blessing descends to the nearest heaven and says, is there anyone
to provoke me that I may respond to his invocation? Is there anyone to ask me so that I may grant him his request? Is there anyone asking my forgiveness so that I may forgive him? And we're going to close with this hadith, which is also actually a, a dua. It was narrated by a dua in on. Bakr al Sadiq said to the Prophet, O Allah's Apostle, teach me an invocation which I may invoke Allah in my prayers. The Prophet said, and we make this as a good say, O Allah, I have wronged my soul very much, oppressed myself, and none forgives the sins but you. So please bestow your forgiveness upon me. No doubt you are the most forgiving, most merciful. And keep us alive. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Ashadu Allah, Ilah, Ilah, Ashadu Allah, Ilah, 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 Muhammad, Allah, Sulullah. Ashadu Allah, Muhammad, Allah, Sulullah.
I'm sorry, man.